This is the first in a series of presentations about the Enhanced Data Display, or ED. ED was created as part of the National Weather Service's Weather Ready Nation pilot project based at Charleston, West Virginia. My name is Chris Leonardi, and I am one of the Emergency Response Specialists based at Charleston. So what is ED? Well, it is an advanced web-based interface that collects numerous types of weather data, mainly in the form of GIS-based layers, into a user-friendly display such that the user does not have to visit numerous websites to view various types of weather information. The original goal is to create a tool to support DSS, or Decision Support Services, which involves meteorologists helping our partners make decisions based on weather information. However, we have found that ED will be useful to these meteorologists as well as weather service partners directly and the general public alike. We have decided to make ED available to all so that all may benefit. Now before we show you how to use ED, we do have to provide this disclaimer. ED is an experimental service and is under continuous development. That means you may see bugs and data issues pop up from time to time, and the interface and available features may be changed, added to, or deleted at any time as well. If you see any interface issues, bugs, or anything else you think needs to be changed or modified, there is a feedback link in the interface that you can use. I will point that out later on in the presentation. Here are some recommendations regarding technology for using ED. Currently, we recommend a desktop or a laptop for viewing the website. While it is usable on a smartphone or tablet, it is certainly not optimized for these interfaces. We are hoping to add a mobile version of ED sometime in the future. The browsers we recommend are Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. Internet Explorer may have some unusual behavior if you use that browser. As far as internet speed, the faster the better. While it is certainly usable for low-end broadband speeds, we recommend more speed, if at all possible, for the website to really shine. As far as screen resolution, again, the bigger the better. A minimum of 1024 by 768 will be usable, but as you see in the image on the right, a nice widescreen large monitor will allow you to see much more information very easily. Finally, it is time to meet Ed and introduce the interface. Here is the URL we'll be using for the demonstration. Afterwards, try it out yourself. Here is the ED interface. This will mainly serve as an introduction to the various parts of the display with functionality explained in future segments. Notice the URL preview.weather.gov slash ED. One recommendation I would have right away, when you arrive at the site, press the F11 key this will place your browser into full screen mode, giving you a little more screen real estate to play with. You can strike the F11 key once again to exit this mode. Now introducing the parts of the display, starting with the top bar. The hourglass you would click to set the auto refresh interval of the display. Next to this is a search box. You can type an address, a zip code, or a city, or some other feature, and Ed will zoom to that location and place a marker. The Tools menu is where you would do things like configuring the order of layers on the display, as well as setting up profiles. Map legends are contained in this interface. Next to this is a feedback function. Clicking this button will bring up a window where you can type in a bug report or send in a feature request. You can add your email address as well if you would like a reply. Finally, on the top row, we have the Help button, which will contain various help topics such as Ed interface features and frequently asked questions. Look here often for updates. Now let's look at the left-hand side of the menu structure. The first thing to notice is this double arrow at the top of the menu. Clicking it will collapse the menu to the left and allow you to see more of the map. Clicking it again will return the map to its original form. Now let's look at the different sections of the left-hand menu, starting with the first and largest, the quick layers. This is a list of commonly used data layers such as radar, satellite, and others. This is meant to give you quick access to the most important data. We will go over the controls in a future segment. At the bottom of the quick layers list, note the background entry. This is a drop-down list of several different background maps that are available for use, several from Google, as well as a few open source alternatives. The traffic light to the right of this will bring up Google's traffic data layer. 
The two buttons below the quick layers, the first of which is more layers. Clicking on this button will bring up a drop down list of dozens of additional data layers in areas such as aviation, fire weather, severe storms, and others. You can click on the folders to see additional layers. You can also type in the filter window, such as if you type storm, it will bring up all relevant layers in the more layers list that have to do with thunderstorms. You can control the opacity separately in this interface as well, and clicking on the broom will clear any of these additional layers. To remove this list of more layers, click on the button once again. Quick links will bring up a list of relevant websites, clicking on one of which will bring up the website in a separate window. Below this is the mouse click control. This is what happens when you click on the map using the left or right mouse buttons. By default, a right click on the map will bring up a menu with public or marine forecast information depending on whether you click on land or water. You can change this to also display a fire weather specific forecast or to bring up a measuring tool. Below this, you can enable the left click forecast which will bring up this information with a left click instead of a right click. This might be useful if you are using this interface on a tablet or a smartphone. Finally, let's look at the bottom of the interface. First, in the bottom left-hand corner, you will find the Models button. Clicking this will bring up an interface where you can access various computer model information. You may see other buttons appear to the right of the Models button, and this may occur when other sub-windows of ED are minimized. Further off to the right, you will see the Map Storm Reports button, and clicking this will bring up the last six hours of storm reports received by the National Weather Service. Click this button again to remove the reports. You can give us a plus one on Google Plus or like us on Facebook with the buttons to the right of the Map Storm Reports button. This of course is assuming you are logged in to either service. Finally, we have the Privacy button off to the right. Clicking this will bring up a small menu where you can access the Weather Service's privacy policy, the websites of the Department of Commerce and NOAA, as well as other information. Thank you for viewing this presentation on the Enhanced Data Display. We hope that you find this service useful and enjoyable. Be sure to look for additional presentations in the same location you found this one. Remember, the URL for ED is preview.weather.gov slash ED. To leave us feedback, use the feedback function in ED, or post a comment on the Enhanced Data Display page on Facebook.